G'day RC friends, today I'm going to answer your most burning questions about how much scale models can lift. We've got a TRX4, the Cross RC BC8 Mammoth, a Huina 1580 linear actuator excavator, a 114 hydraulic excavator and the Kubota WA470 hydraulic wheel loader. And if you want to know what each of these guys can do, stick around. Now my Bronco just has a cheap, one of the cheap winches that you can get. It's a very small geared down motor. So with this smallest and cheapest of winches, we are going to spool it out. And we shall start with the uh, two and three quarter pound weight, which is a one and a quarter barbell. Again, I'll stress, this is not scientific. This is just for entertainment. And we've got one and a quarter kilos or two and three quarter pounds. Now I'm not giving it full throttle. That's full throttle and it's doing it. So it can do that. We'll drop that down. It did the first one. Now we have uh, two and a half kilos, which is five and a half pounds. Here we go. Suspension drops right down. Let's see. I don't know if it's gonna do this. It might. Ooh, it is. Look at that. All right. Well, that's interesting. I've got to tell you, that's actually more than I thought it could do. Take the weight off, see the suspension pick right up. <laughs> I really don't think it's going to do this. And now you'll see the suspension squat down and then see what it can do. I've just got it pulling slowly and I'll need to increase power. <laughs> the suspension squatted right down. We've just hit a uh, stall, so it can't do that. But the best it could do was two and a half kilos or five and a half pounds. On to the next one. Okay, now we're onto the BC8, and you'll see how slowly this 12 volt winch is spooling out. This is uh, OEM equipment as part of the BC8 flagship kit. Now I don't have a pulley here, and I really should have a wheel right here. So again, I said this is for entertainment, this is not scientific. Uh, the only real scientific way to measure winch strength here is for a direct line pull, which is not what we're doing. But it is still fun, right? Oh, I'm having fun anyway, I hope you are. <laughs> now you can hear it slow down a bit. Now it's a brushed motor on a uh, worm gear in, in the gearbox in there. It's a decent reduction. Okay, now he's two and a half kilograms, which is five and a half pounds. <laughs> no trouble. So we'll drop that. I think this is eight and a quarter pounds. That's 3.75 kilos. No worries. Well, some worries actually. It's, it is slow. All right, here's the BC-8 with five kilograms. Or 11 pounds. And it's slow, but it is doing it. All right, this is six and a quarter kilograms. I really, uh, I'm not expecting it to be able to do this, but I guess we'll find out. Suspension's tucking down. It's doing it. Look at that. That's five, six and a quarter kilograms. I'll put it on the screen anyway. This is five and two and a half with the BC-8. Oh, it's doing it. It's off the ground. Look at that. That's a five and a two and a half. I mean, it's slow, but it's doing it. Well, Sorry, winch, we're gonna to have to add another one now. I really didn't think it was gonna do this. I would have done the Huina first. <laughs> it really did tuck in there. Okay, onward with the torture test. This is a five kilo, two and a half kilo, and one and a quarter kilo. Let's do it. Or not, as I think the case is probably gonna be now. Doesn't wanna give up. Of course, I don't want to burn this motor out, but it's off the ground completely. Doesn't sound too happy about it, but it's off the ground. That's impressive. Okay, now it's 10 kilos or 22 pounds, which is for me conveniently written on the uh, barbell itself. Here we go. You can see it's squatting down. The weight's now off the box. Let's see what happens. Can it get it off the ground? Goodness me, I really didn't think it would do that. <gasps> Look at this, we're clear and off the ground and lifting. It's slow, but it's doing it. 
Well, <laughs> that's 22 pounds for this winch. Wow. Okay, well, add more weight. Now it's time to go to nearly 25 pounds. Let's do that. Sorry, winch, you're not going to like this. Okay, here we go with uh, 22 and 2, so 24.75 pounds or 11 and a quarter kilos. I'm expecting to hit stall at some point. It's still actually moving, believe it or not. I don't want to burn this out, but uh, that's off the ground. Goodness gracious. <laughs> it's, it's got a slight squeak now. I don't want to damage my winch. Heat is the, uh, the, the biggest threat. She's still cold though. Well, I guess we have more weight, don't we? Okay, with growing reluctance and feelings of dread for my winch, we've got 22 and, uh, what was it? Five and a half. So 27 and a half pounds, or uh, 12 and a half kilograms. 12 and a half kilograms for this electric winch. It's a stock winch that comes with the BC-8 flagship. And honestly, this winch is proving to be as tough as the rest of the machine. It is an absolutely incredible machine, this. It's, it's such an amazing rig. And it's off the ground. The motor's pretty quiet now. It's really uh, bogged down, but it's doing it. I mean, we're off the ground. <laughs> I can't believe this. Okay, now we have 10, two and a half, and one and a quarter kilos and it's winching. I don't know if it's gonna do it honestly. I'm taking it very easy here. Oh, BC-8 winch, I'm sorry I doubted you. It is actually still moving really slowly, but it is moving. I do wonder how hot that motor's getting. Nope, it's stalled, there you go. So the best we had was, incredibly, the best we had was 12 and a half kilos, which is nothing to sneeze at. Okay, well, we'll release that. 12 and a half kilograms. I'm gonna pause this uh, now and show you the winch. It's quite amazing. So that's the BC-8 winch. It's just a 12 volt motor with a worm gear and uh, comes out the back like that. Now again, we weren't doing this on a pulley, so it, uh, it had its work cut out for it. Having the rope running over the end of the truck like that did actually give it a, uh, an advantage, and a direct pull would be more scientific, but I'm just not set up to that. But look, for entertainment's sake, 12 and a half kilos ain't shabby. Right, on to the next victim. Okay, now we're on to the winner 1580. Caterpillar 336D and it's using linear actuators. It's got tiny little 280 motors in, the, uh, in each of these. So it's a worm gear with a nut in the end. Anyway, enough details. First off, one and a quarter kilograms. Now we might hear some clicky goodness here, but that's okay, because I'm gonna do an upgrade video soon for this. Here we go. Oh, there's one and a quarter. Now I'll also note that I'm using the primary actuators here, which Actually, it's not those guys, they're... I've just realized I was wrong. It's actually using a worm gear and a... And a this is essentially a, a worm gear setup. Uh, that's at, for the boom. Anyway, this is uh, two and a half and one and a quarter. So two point, oh, what's two, four, six, seven, five. It's eight and a quarter pounds or uh, three and three quarter kilos. Up she goes. All right, here we go with five kilos, 11 pounds. Well, it did it. I told you from my review that wasn't quite scientific. This is better. That's five kilos. Now you can bet that the stick here with this linear actuator, that'd be click city. It wouldn't be doing it. But the motor, in underneath here is actually quite chunky. 
I kind of don't want to go any heavier than this. I'm going to do it. All right, I'm doing it so you don't have to. Six and a quarter kilo. Here's the point of truth. Nope. So that's the motor hitting its stall. I'll just try it with some momentum. Oh, I did it! Now that's using momentum. Um, I used a principle there. It can do it, but that'll be its limit. So we've got five, six and a quarter kilograms. That's honestly not bad for lift. Now if we try and use the stick for this, which is not smart, um, there will come a point when that has to come out where you'll just hear it go click, click, click. So we're not going to do that. But that was pretty impressive, eh? All right, on to the next machine. This is a Liebherr branded uh, 114 scale. That's the hydraulic pump you can hear, she's kind of noisy. All right, so we're gonna start with five kilograms, which is 11 pounds, here we go. No trouble at all, of course. All right, we've got five kilograms. This is now six and a quarter. She's straining a bit, but it can do it. Now we'll go for seven and a half. This is seven and a half kilograms. Or 16 and a half pounds. It gets it off the ground, but that's it. So the limit we reached here was actually lower than the Huina 1580. Which is simultaneously interesting and disappointing. <laughs> wow. Now, since we've got it out, I'll give you a quick look at this machine. This is the hydraulic pump turning on. I'll just stick the bucket back on. It has an interior, the door opens. I've got the glass out right now so that this GoPro could fit in it for another video. The seat's 3D printed and I stuck some magnets on the bottom of it so I can just park it in the cab. I might dress it up some more. Uh, and it's got, uh, I mean, it uses the same radio that a lot of them use, the Fly Sky, uh, IS6, I think it is. And it's got, you know, it's rather nice, it's proportional. Now, all the, all the uh, internals are brushed, except for the pump. And I've got, speaking of the pump, I've got this uh, system running at uh, 2 MPA at the moment. I'll show you inside. So that brushless motor there is the pump and on this gauge, uh, on some other machines, they recommend you max out at 5 MPA. This thing gets up to, oh, actually it kisses 4 MPA, but it does leak slightly. Um, I'm still getting used to the machine, but I've got it fairly well set up as best I can right now. And it's got the cheapest of the cheap brushed controllers. There's a brushed motor here for the uh, turret control or the rotation. and brushed motors for the tracks. So this is hydraulic, but it's cheap hydraulic. It's not fabulous. It does work though. And I think if I get a ditch bucket for this thing, rather than this monstrosity, which is, you know, it's quite large, uh, I think it'll be all right. Right, that's that. Now let's get on to the star of the show. I want to see what the WA470 can do. Let's see what this thing can lift. I'll give you a spoiler, this one will be no trouble. Alright, so we have, that's uh, 5 kilograms plus the bar, which is negligible. So there's 5 kilograms. Now we've got 2.5 and 1.25 and and on each side, so now we have uh, 5 six and a half kilograms is like nothing now of course you make sure you have your power rack if you're going to lift unassisted here um, here we go with 10 kilograms that's uh, 22 pounds <laughs> he doesn't care what's 22 pounds let's go bigger 
seven and a half each side, so we're on 15 kilograms. Let's see what it can do. Oh, I've got it up. And it is actually going up, but just barely. Out of interest, what's our gauge show? Suggested we keep it under 5 MPA. Now on this gauge, when we start to lift, it gets to two point or two and a quarter. And it suggested I can increase the hydraulic pressure. And I might. Now it said to keep it under five so that you don't burst a line. They're beautifully spring braided to keep everything nice. It's a lovely, lovely machine this. So that's the end of the test for now. We've had the TRX4 with its lift limit. The Huena 1580, which really honestly surprised me. That little uh, electrically actuated excavator, just a cheapie, it really did quite well. We had the mighty BC-8 Mammoth and its worm geared 12-volt uh, winch, which just did not stop. Now we've got our cheap Leapout branded uh, excavator which looks cool and the hydraulic feel of that thing is uh, it's something special. It's quite fun but it's weak so it wants a ditch bucket I think for maximum enjoyment. But the VA470 has more to give and I think we might have a little bit of a play with that later. I will finish by saying the uh, 470 here it did actually get the weights off the ground. They're not actually on the ground here. So it did manage to lift 15 kilograms, which is impressive. Now that's just stock though. And I think if I increase the uh, hydraulic pressure, there's a screw for that in the back here. Um, it might be worth seeing what it can do. I'm not too keen on blowing a line though, because the maintenance would be unfun. But uh, look at the size of this, this cylinder. It's enormous. And it uses a brushless motor for the pump, which is a similar one to the uh, one in the excavator there. But it's the quality of the components throughout both of these different models that makes the difference. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. That was a fun little distraction for the afternoon, and I hope it helped brighten your day. Leave me a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT.